We know there's a compelling story for silver as we head into the next decade. Some people are even saying that we may have a silver shortage. When you look at the demand components coming down the track for silver, it is astounding. Today, we're fortunate to be joined by Mr. John Little. He writes for the Silver Industry Substack.com. He has spent years researching the silver industry, and we're going to ask him, is there really a silver shortage, or is it just guys in their basement, silver pumpers like me, spreading false <laughs> information? John, welcome to Ron's Basement. Hey, it's my pleasure to be here to talk about what I call silver is on the brink of extinction, and I have the data to prove it. So let's you do. Get, yeah. Sure. All right. All right. Well, let, let, let's dive in. I want to I want to remind our viewers now that if they want to learn or enjoy more of your writing, they can go to the silver industry dot substack dot com. Uh, and your your writing seems to come out every day. It's always something very interesting about silver. So the information we're going to share today comes after countless hours of research. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, people can can subscribe to you and there's no charge. Is that correct? Yeah, it's free, totally free. I, I mean, I don't want to monetize this. I want to just share, just like you do, Ron, it's just about uh, the community. I am affiliated with the Reddit, you know, the, the apes online. And, you know, so we all believe in evangelizing, you know, because it is a lifestyle. It is sort of a, a mindset, the way mm -hmm. we do um banking, the way we view um, traditional financial instruments, I think a lot of us view the world differently. And yeah. on the silver's on the brink of extinction. There's, I got a, at least two or three articles on um, the silverindustry.substack.com. You did get that right. Most people don't. Um, there is a chart there. It, it basically, if you look at the demand across solar, aerospace, uh, military. Uh, we just talked about hydrogen fuel cells, electric vehicles, batteries, torpedoes, missiles, bombs, shells, trains. I did a long article on how much these, um, all the electric trains, when you think of the Bay Area rapid transit, the Metro, L London Underground, China's connected the whole country with high speed trains. And some go as fast as like three to 400 miles per hour because they actually levitate above the track. And the way they do that is by using magnets. So you got one that's, you know how opposite magnets repel when you push mm -hmm. them towards each other? Well, they're doing that. And silver's the best, just like when they made the uh, first nuclear bomb, they used uh, 4 million ounces of silver to make these gigantic magnets to enrich the uranium. So that's called maglev, like magnetized levitation. The train is levitating. Yeah. So back to your question. Well, that, that's what I do here in the basement. I'm I'm actually levitating above my seat with some silver right. silver magnet. <laughs> I, I see that. It looks like the uh, the magical fairies there also gave you this beautiful Oxford shirt with a reptile. You, I'd vote for you any day. Uh, but I you're, know. You're, you, you're too honest to be a politician. So, um, you're, you're well. You're 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 a special guest, so I wanted to dress up. But I have to say, you made my head spin with uh, all those demand sources you you listed off for silver. But you forgot one, and that was the uh, all the people out there, right? The people that are joining us now, also investor demand for oh, silver. Yeah, yeah. If we get into monetary, right. which is yeah. actually um, we're looking at. There are organizations out there like the Sound Money Defense League, which is uh, run by Stefan Gleason of Money Metals. They're going state to state. They have full-time staff that are going to the legislators and saying, you should allocate some of your state fund, the general fund, to because these teachers work all their lives. They're policemen or fire municipal employees. So they're these public employee retirement accounts. They're called PARA public employee retirement account. And they're at risk because they're sort of riding on a sea of debt and derivatives. So the idea is, why don't you at least allocate a percentage? Right now, they're less than a half of 1%. And if they were to return to the historic mean of 3%, that would be a 
time magnitude of talk about a silver squeeze. So, yeah. you know, that's the monetary side. And then we talk about the industrial side. Um, mm -hmm. There is not enough silver. There's just uh, like any, the, the difference with silver and the reason we believe it's money, besides the fact that it's been used as money for thousands of years, is because it's an element on the periodic chart. It's a noble metal. It's it has use or intrinsic value. It's portable, it's divisible, it's fungible, it's a store of wealth. So once we spread that message to everyone, um, it is gone. I mean, there's only so much oil out there. It's, um, I guess they call you a Malthusian if you believe that there's only a finite amount of things. But I think it's fair to say with when you get into the charts for silver and gold. And I sent an email to you that you can unpack later, but it shows all the metals that are mined. You can go to Visual Capitalist and it'll show all the metals that are mined in a year. And it's roughly 2,950 million tons of metal. But most of that metal is for steel, mm -hmm. um, iron, which is FE on the elements chart. Yeah. Of which, so if you compare gold mined to all the metals mined, it's a magnitude of a million times more or wow. less. I should say a million times less. Only 3,000 tons of gold are mined a year. And wow. then the ratio on silver is 24,000. So for every ounce of gold that's mined, only eight to nine ounces of silver are mined. Yet we're dealing with a ratio today at a, probably close to 75 to 80, right? I, I didn't do the math today. Yeah. So yeah. that just shows you if they're pulling it out of the ground at a one to nine ratio, yet the paper price is one to whoever wants to do the math. Um, I'm, I'm guessing 77-ish, yeah. um, that it makes sense to really stack silver in lieu of gold, in my humble opinion. Yeah. And, and, and especially when you look at the demand profile and then also uh, what about production? I mean, these silver miners, it's like they just stumble upon all these new major silver deposits, right? And they can they can start mining it within a year or two. I mean, the the, the supply of silver from the mines is just, it, it's very easy to find. I'm saying that in a joking way. Right? Yeah, <laughs> but, right. There is, yeah, the fact is, um, in fact, it gets worse than that. Mexico, I've, this news came out just last week. Um, experienced a 2%, Mexico's the world's largest producer of silver, and they're down year over year over 2%. So is Peru. And there's a reason for that. There's climate activists. Um, there are strikes. Um, Newmont was running, I think it was the Peñasquito mine. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going yeah. off the top of my head. But they had a labor strike. And then you're going to get people that are environmental activists that think, you know, if you look at the majority of silver and gold mine, they're ran out of either Canada or United States. And some of these people in Mexico and Peru don't want to be colonized. I mean, that was sort of the playbook of the king and queen of Spain and, and England and France. So there's a lot of things happening. Um, but there are some good discoveries. Some of the best are right here in the United States in the Tonopah region of Nevada, um, Black Rock Silver just found 100 million ounces of silver. Um, and that's, uh, and then Suma's right next door at Tonopah East. And the veins get even better as you work east. So there is some hope. Um, and New Mexico, believe it or not, which is part of that Sierra Madre district um, that where some of the best silver in the world came out of northern uh, Chihuahua. And, uh, and Suma has a, a project in New Mexico as well, right? Is it Mag yeah, they, um, Mogi? Yeah, Mogion Mogi, is. Um, Mogion. I, I spent a week there and, oh my God, they, the only reason they stopped producing there is because the wars um, kicked in. And with the war effort, everyone sort of participates in building a bunch of Jeeps and bombs and things like you. We know that right. story. I've walked it, watched enough MASH episodes, you know, or whatever. But um, yeah, there's silvers on the brink of extinction. I have an article on silverseek.com um, and it got shared like 900 times, which is, it's not like retweeting. Someone had to actually take the URL and throw it into LinkedIn. Um, it has charts on there showing um, uh, that we may not even get to, 
to 2030, Ron. It's like 2028, we're out of silver. If you're looking to buy gold, silver, or platinum, do yourself a favor and check out Pimbex, the online precious metals bullion dealer and sponsor of Ron's Basement. I was a happy customer before they offered to support the channel. You'll find they have the best prices, quality, and service. I think Pimbex is best, and you will too. And be sure to tell them that you're from Ron's Basement. And I've been baffled lately by just the, the prospect for solar. I want to throw this out and get your reaction to this, but we know that right now, as you and I are speaking, the demand for silver from the solar industry is very robust, right? I think if I, if I have it correctly, the Silver Institute is projecting that this year, 160 million ounces of silver will be used in solar. And some people think that by the end of the year, that number could approach almost 200 million ounces of silver, which is one fifth of the world's silver production <laughs> this year. Okay. Now, now, so that alone is staggering, but there's now, and there's this, this uh, big meeting coming up at the end of November, the COP 28 meeting, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of, that's a United Nations. It's a, you know, actually countries of the world get together the COP 21 years back mm -hmm. is when the Paris Accords came out of. But uh, supposedly at this next meeting, they're going to propose that we mandate that within by the year 2030, that the world triple the current installed green energy um, elect electric production base, triple what we have right now, which uh, is going to be probably made up a lot with solar. So you think you look at that number that we have this year and you can't really just triple that because we're talking about the current installed base. It's stunning. And what's what's even more interesting to me is that and I'm not a solar photovoltaic guru, is that this next generation of solar panels, the top con panels use 50% more silver than the panels that we, I mean, it's mind numbing. It's like, there's no way that we have enough silver to supply just for solar alone. Yeah. And the thing you got to think too, now I want to add to that. And I can't even say photo vitalic. Photo vitalic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it took I, me a few it, weeks to get that one down. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, and when I was in geology, I couldn't say half of the terms either, but I, you know, it's funny. It's just only a coincidence, but just last Wednesday, I was, uh, we were the only media invited to the Silver Institute's uh, gala in New York City, where I was horribly underdressed and rude, I, I was told. But I, I did sit next to Chen Lin, and Chen mm -hmm. Lin is the one that's been doing this research on what you just talked about, the um, the new panels, or I think they're transitioning away from TopCon into HJT. Okay. Uh, which, and you're right, they are going to increase the silver load significantly, and it even gets better if you love silver. They're going to double-sided panels, so they'll catch the sun coming down as well as it reflecting off the sand. Okay, uh, in the, okay? The, the imagine all of Saudi Arabia, the UAE, uh, Dubai. Um, in fact, you can Google the new installation. It's the largest one. I believe it's in the united arab how do you say the last emirates yes that's it mm -hmm. then we work together don't we we just yeah complete, we're completing each other's uh sentences like twins um and they also do the same installation over uh the polar uh the snow so imagine uh -huh. the reflection if you've ever been out in the snow for an right. hour you get a sunburn so they this will double they know that once you're in there and you're most of the expense comes from actually installing the panels you might as well double up on it right right so right. uh you're right uh these rules that some people say oh the transition to net zero will never happen well whether you like it or not everyone's bought in and you either you know they're phasing out the internal combustion engine and <laughs> you know that doesn't mean someone's going to come to your house and arrest you but just good luck filling up your gas tank in in a few years um, yeah. because your central bank digital currency um, may not work at your favorite friendly Petro outlet, but yeah. uh, your charging station may work. I'm, and I don't want to get into the nut, nutty conspiracies there, but there is some truth. That, you're right. 
uh, the United Nations, the World Economic Forum, you just you name any of these consortiums of um, Europe. Uh, and this is one thing that whether people are Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, Hindu, they're all on board this uh, mm -hmm. transition to net zero. And it's based on really silver and other critical minerals, zinc, nickel, graphite, cobalt, uranium, mm -hmm. et cetera. They're all metals. So, 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 so the price of silver as we sit today, let's say $23.50 per ounce, roughly, a lot of people think the price has been suppressed. Do you think that at some point in the future um, that physical demand for silver, the actual physical market could overwhelm what some people refer to as, you know, the paper manipulated COMEX LBMA market, that worldwide market demand could uh, could eventually break the stranglehold, it feels like, yeah. that possibly the uh, electronic markets have held over silver now for what some people say has been decades. First Mining Gold is a development company advancing two of the largest gold projects in Canada. Spring Pole in Ontario and Du Parquet, located in Quebec, each already has 5 million ounces of gold reserves, but exploration initiatives are underway at both projects to find even more gold. First Mining is well financed, has zero debt, and owns an interest in four additional Canadian gold development projects. I would say all commodities right now have artificial, they've been managed. Mm -hmm. um, and the re main reason is the big users of silver um, are these industrialists that make the trains, that make the hydrogen fuel cells, that make the bombs, that make um, the... Um, let's just take Musk. He has a mm -hmm. solar company, he has an electric vehicle company, and he has a rocket company. Those are the three largest users of silver. Yeah. Okay, does he... Let's say I owned... Um, Hershey's. Would I want high sugar prices or low sugar prices as a factory input? I can answer that low. Okay. All right. So most industrialists also sit on bank boards. I live here in Pittsburgh, which was flourishing during the Gilded Age. It, it, names like Mellon, Carnegie, Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan. These are people that love low factory inputs, including low labor costs. So they've been able to smash it down, but there always comes what, what we call discovery. We'll see that oil can only be, you know, OPEC may get together and say we can manage it and cut production. A new president comes in and cuts the Keystone pipeline. Um, and then you got people in the, or, or they won't grant any drilling permits on federal lands. There's always ways for people to interfere with a free market but not with silver and gold because now we're seeing a shift to where we have a large, more than two thirds of the world that are revolting against the dollar. And they believe with this BRICS and um, the gram of gold for a barrel of oil exchange, this is gonna set silver and gold free. Um, plus I think domestically, like we spoke about in a previous video, that we're going to see institutional investors rushing into gold and silver as the financialized um, sea of debt and derivatives are failing. The so-called yeah. ma Magnificent <laughs> Seven stocks, um, savings, um, insurance policies, all these sort of ways that people, even crypto, all of that's going to rotate into hard, tangible assets, just like Exter's Pyramid, silver and gold, are right at the tip and all of that stuff ends up falling into your hands. It's just a long game. It, it hasn't been that long. Silver, you know, even people are bitching about the price last year and it chopped sideways. It stayed flat for the whole year, which meant it did 50% better than Facebook. It did 30% yeah. better than the Magnificent Seven in general, much better than 60% better than Tesla. And that's silver having a bad year. So people should stop whining and keep stacking and buy the dip. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I think we have gone through, and I don't hear many people say this, but a let's say it's been a short period, two or three year period of permanent 
geopolitical change in the world. Right. And that and that this bifurcation that's occurred with the BRICS and the other Eastern countries uh, that are kind of banding together, it's so critical to understand that they have a completely different perspective when it comes to precious metals, both from a monetary and a industrial perspective. And I think that can be demonstrated by things like the Shanghai Gold Exchange, where we're right. seeing the physical price for silver sometimes 13, 14, 12 percent higher than what we have uh, in the East. And the other thing I want to throw in, uh, and I have to credit Rick Rule because I heard him say this, is with silver in particular, um, and especially in the West, that that we don't necessarily need for silver to be loved by the by the investment community here. We just need it to be less hated. <laughs> and that when it goes from being hated to neutral, that alone could result in, you know, tremendous price increases, real value increases uh, for the for the price of silver. So, John, I want to say thank you for joining us again. You've shared a lot of great information uh, for everyone watching. Thank you. And I want to invite everyone who's watching, if you want to learn a lot about silver, John puts out excellent written material, feels like almost every day, always something very interesting about silver. You can go to thesilverindustry.substack.com. It's free, right? Just like Ron's Basement, all of my content is always free. Um, and if you want to support John, you can do that there, but I'd highly recommend it because it's, it's, it's concise information and it's always something very interesting. So, uh, did I forget anything, John? Uh, no, you're too kind actually. And I want to tell everyone there that, uh, I tried to fire up a YouTube channel and I failed miserably. So what Ron does is to me is, uh, astounding and I'm a big, <laughs> and I'm a basement dweller and I will always end by saying, buy this buy the dip dollar cost average in and you know slow and steady is better than uh going all in just everything's based on moderation but sprinkle wow. a lot of your your wow. net worth into silver and gold anyway and, and love your audience and i'm so honored to be here today really mm -hmm.